200 uh, years ago, the most famous and powerful man in the English-speaking world was Arthur Wellesley. Now, you may not have heard of Arthur Wellesley, but let me tell you that Arthur Wellesley, 200 years ago, as the most famous and powerful man in the English-speaking world, was kind of like uh, Lionel Messi... Barack Obama and Harry Styles all rolled into one. Everybody knew Arthur Wellesley. You may not know Arthur Wellesley 200 years later, but you may know him better as his title of the Duke of Wellington. And few history buffs out there, you will know that Arthur Wellesley, better known as the Duke of Wellington, led the Allied forces against Napoleon's army there in modern-day Belgium and defeated Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo. See, you just thought it was an ABBA song, didn't you? Arthur Wellesley, as a result, the Duke of Wellington, as a result of his famous uh, military battle, went into politics and became, of course, the Prime Minister of Great Britain. And 200 years ago, Arthur Wellesley, the Duke of Wellington, was the most famous and powerful man in the English-speaking world. What you may not know, Toby, is that The Duke of Wellington was a solid man of faith. In fact, the Duke of Wellington would often go back to his small village where he grew up and where his home was, and he'd go to the small parish church, and once a week they would have communion. See, in the Adventist church, of course, Mari, we have traditionally our communion commemoration, a communion celebration every three months. Well, in the church that Arthur grew up in, communion was every week. And it was done a little bit different back then in the Duke of Wellington's church. See, rather than the deacons bringing the bread and the wine around to everybody, parishioners in this small village church would come down the front and there'd be a rail with some cushions there at the other foot of the rail and about eight to ten people could line up kneeling down and the parish priest, the reverend, would serve every person who came down the front, would serve them the bread and the wine. And when Arthur Wellesley the most famous man, the most powerful man in the English-speaking world, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, the defeater of uh, Napoleon, when he came to church and came down the front to take communion, everybody, of course, was cautious and conscientious about making sure that they weren't down the front with the Prime Minister of Great Britain at the railing whenever communion was served. Everybody stayed back in their seats waiting for the Duke of Wellington to finish, returned back to his seat and then other people would come down. One day, Caden, the Duke of Wellington was there in his parish church taking communion. He came down the front. Everybody, of course, stood in their seats. And another man, an older man, uh, a poor man of the village, disheveled, a little bit dirty from his day's activities, came into the church a little bit late, realising it was communion and seeing that only one person was down the front, came down the centre aisle and joined the Duke of Wellington, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, the most famous and powerful man in the English-speaking world, there at the communion railing. And there was murmuring in the church. Does he not know who's down there at the front? And of course, the head deacon, as all good head deacons should do, came down quietly came over to the older man, kneeling next to the the Prime Minister of Great Britain, Britain, and quietly whispered into his ear, 
That's the Duke of Wellington beside you. Now, I mean, apart from the fact that that was 200 years ago when that particular church has some different traditions of how they do communion than what we have today, it is a little bit strange, isn't it, that 200 years ago, there in that church with the Duke of Wellington and an older man not realising who was kneeling beside him, it's a bit strange that the head deacon should think to shoo the man away. I mean, of course, Levi, communion is about equality, isn't it? I mean, as part of our communion celebrations in the Adventist church, we also include that moment there at Jesus' last meal with his disciples where he washed their feet. I mean, normally it was a role reserved for the lowest of the servants. Can you imagine open-toe sandals on dusty roads shared with camels and cows and dogs and animals. Can you imagine what people's feet might have been like as they trekked along these dusty roads? And so, of course, the lowest of the servants, normally the younger one, Callum, they would have to wash their feet and Jesus said, no, give me a towel, give me some water. I will do it. Communion, particularly the foot washing component of it, says that we are all equal in our service to each other. When we have the bread and the wine, it sends a message to say that we are all equal in our need for God's good grace. That's why Paul says, David, in Galatians 3 verse 28, that in Christ we are all equal. And communion, as we remember and commemorate it, is a reminder that we are all equal in our service to each other, and we are all equal in our need for salvation found in Christ. So 200 years ago, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, the Duke of Wellington, the defeater of Napoleon, the most famous and powerful man in the English-speaking world is kneeling to take communion. An older, disheveled man who has wandered in late and not realising who is down the front is kneeling beside him. A dutiful and conscientious head deacon whispers into his ear, that's the Prime Minister. That's the Duke. Follow me. Get away from here. The Duke of Wellington, at the, out of the corner of his eye, realises what's going on. Realises what the head deacon must be whispering into the old man's ears. And the Duke of Wellington, there at the railing 200 years ago, grabs hold of the arm of the man kneeling beside him and says in a prime ministerial voice, don't you move. We are all equal here. At the foot of the cross, we are all equal here. In church on this Sabbath day, taking communion, we are all equal in our need to serve each other. We're all equal in our need 